200 targets, four days. More than a thousand clay shooters mission to shoot them. It's an Italian opera of sporting success. It's the FITASC World Championships from here in Italy. Welcome to Clay Sports. Italy can lay claim to being the spiritual home of opera, of football, fashion, art, ice cream and shooting sports. We join the action on day three, nearing the end of this 200 bird World Fitask competition. The American Derek Mine is in the lead, but he has contenders. Two misses on the last parkour, so yeah, it's maybe a little lapse of con concentration, but 48 on them two layouts, I'm really pleased with that. So in front of me at the minute, people are still out there shooting. You have Kevin DeMichael, I think, on 142. Uh, maybe one other, I don't know, but I do know that Derek Miner shot a fantastic 145, which is just unbelievable. Really, really good. That's seriously good. It's probably two more than where everybody should be, you know. Maybe I can claw one back, maybe he'll drop one. That's how, that's how you've got to think, you know. You can never think that somebody's out of reach because anything can happen over 50. Even 25, things can change, you know. Another shooter who is in with a chance is George Digweed, and he doesn't even know it. And I've just shot 48 today, and I wouldn't want to go and shoot those layouts again for 48. So, um, where has that put me? Eight down, uh, one, four, two. So, I, I, look, I have no idea. I don't look at the scores. Uh, I'm not interested in the scores. I can only do what I can do. and. And I'm happy to be where I am. If, if someone had said to me, you can have one, four, two and not shoot those targets, then I would have taken it. So you know, that's all I can say. Here's Richard Folds, a former Olympic medalist, as well as a sporting shooter. I'm kind of ticking along. There's, I'm not setting the world on fire. Um, I'm shooting 22s, 23s and 24s, but um, I had a bad round yesterday in the rain, but you know, so did everyone. And they just had to get on with it and put up with it, really. We've had um, everything from 35 degrees, bright sunshine, no wind, right up to 40 mile an hour winds, torrential rain and kind of everything in between. So it's been a little bit of potluck but you've got to you've got to take what you're served. I mean you're using ice cream now so we're, we're back in business aren't we? Yeah hurry up it's melting. <laughs> At least he gets the benefit of Italian ice cream. There are shooters here from 41 countries, from five continents. Per Magnus has come from Norway. I'm uh, a little bit for no shooter. This is up more than it's Actually, he speaks perfectly good English. Uh, Fukita sporting is quite popular. Uh, we don't have the. Uh, uh, sadly, we don't have the opportunity to uh, to organize this kind of competitions back home. Uh, but we like to shoot compact and smaller sporting events. So uh, you see a lot of people from Finland and Sweden and, and, and Norway here. Yeah. It's a massive event. More than a thousand shooters have come to Umbria to compete in the top prize in any sporting discipline. Considering almost a, a thousand and a hundred shooter, world record of 41 countries coming uh, from all over the world, uh, it's really important uh, for Italy, it's really important for uh, the region uh, and it's really important for also the shooting range of Piancardato, which is the uh, the winning for them. Una cosa veramente immensa. There is even a team from Kuwait. No, it's just a bit of an experiment to bring a team here to the World Championships of Fitask. See how we go. So it's been a bit of a learning curve. The four days of the competition see extremes of weather. Promatic supplies all the traps here and their guys are on hand to make sure they all run smoothly, even when the torrential rain on day two turns the ground into a quagmire. Happily, the Primatic team has little to do. This trap was loaded with clays still wrapped in plastic, so they need some untangling. We shot yesterday in the most horrendous conditions you could ever imagine. I'm absolutely amazed that the shoot was able to continue in the same vein that it did. Everybody got through, everybody's bought into it. The whole reason the shoot got through is because the local people have bought into this and Promatic Traps work in any conditions. And they work 
in a, in a way that, you know, they had two and a half inches of rain on them in a very short space of time. All of the cables, et cetera, et cetera, would have been flooded, and yet they still continued to work. The knife separators separate the targets. Look, you know, they could have easily got stuck together. You know, we've all seen it years ago where you're un trying to, you know, where the paint sticks and, and everybody's trying to sort out. It was fantastic to get through it uh, and only have the delays that we had yesterday was was a credit to the shoot and Pramadi. Uh, it was actually horrific at times. How um, did that affect your shooting? My shooting didn't really change. Um, I just kept myself, you know, on the gas all the way through. If you let things like that bother you, you're not you're not going to place anywhere. You know, there's nothing you can do about the weather. You just got to deal with it, man up, and just do your best. You know, it was difficult getting from peg to peg. Um, certain certain areas where we were shooting were a little bit difficult uh, to stand and, and, and shoot properly, but I just did my best and come off of a 46 out of 50, what I was really pleased with. One target uh, I let go because of the weather, my hands were that slippery, I lost control of the gun. So you can imagine how much rain we had. Uh, Primatic, uh, they, they never they never fall to, you know. They, I mean, I've seen one or two, maybe, maybe no birds, over the course of 150 targets, you know, which I've seen, which I've shot, you know. I've stood and watched four or five squads go through. Everything's good, the traps look fantastic. Um, that There's a lot of weather conditions they've had to sort of, uh, you know, go, go through this week. We've got extreme heat back to extreme weather conditions from, from the water and the rain. So, yeah, they, they've been reliable, they've been faultless. So, yeah, pleased to represent them. Even the Fitask Capo de Capi is delighted with how the event has gone. It is unreasonable success. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic competition. That, that kind of competition is so complicated to organize. Uh, we start to work two years before. It's a fantastic advertising for our sport. The gun trade is well represented here. Browning has brought a gunsmith in a van who can fix problems. All the big names sponsor stands and there are try before you buy stands where loyal friends and relations who have never shot before can try out guns like this Pinelli semi-auto. <laughs> One matter on the minds of the gun trade is the future of clay targets, as Marco Martelli from Clay Pigeon Manufacturer Euro Target explains. European law sir, is pushing uh, all the clay target manufacturer to switch uh, the raw material, uh, the binder they are using uh, to make the clay uh, from uh, the traditional uh, coal tar pitch, uh, which is going to be banned uh, in the next uh, two years, in 2018. Uh, because it has been declared dangerous. It's a dangerous material. Coal tar pitch uh, is used for uh, asphalt, uh, for uh, things like that, which uh, you have never seen uh, anybody work on the asphalt without uh, wearing protection uh, on breath uh, and uh, everything this. So the owner of the shooting range, the manager of the shooting range, which works uh, uh, eight, day, eight, eight hours per day on a bunker, uh, into the dust uh, of the coal tar pitch, uh, they are running big risk. This is the reason why your target uh, has been the first uh, and now the only one which is 100% manufacturing target uh, with environmental friendly resin. It's a, it's a perfect resin uh, used uh, for all the type of target uh, we made. The target for the parkour, for the sporting, for the Olympic, for skeet, all of them 100% environmental friendly. Back on the course and by the end of day four, George has shot 190. On the second to last stand, Derek Mine can afford to drop two to equal that score. The all-American shooter who blew in from Kansas is winning friends with his easy, breezy style, but even with two possible misses in hand, the pressure is on him. Every target counts. Yeah, uh, to tears. Yeah. Uh, what was the course like? Absolutely some of the most amazing targets I've ever shot. This was an incredible experience. I loved every minute of it. Uh, beautiful grounds, beautiful targets, uh, perfect for a world championship. 
He is a popular winner. George is second, and after a shoot-off, Anthony Materazzi is third. Mark Winter comes fourth. The ladies is won by Rebecca Bergqvist from Sweden, and Hunter Dreyer from the USA beats Brit Josh Bridges to win the juniors. In the veterans, it's the Brit Arnie Palmer, and Brit John Bidwell wins the super veterans. It, it has been mainly US-British triumph here in Italy, and the main man remains Derek Mine, who is, of course, sponsored by Promatic. For more about FitAsk events, go to fitask.com. And for Primatic, visit Primatic.co.uk. Congratulations to all who took part, especially the winners. Well done, Derek. Now we're here thanks to clay trap manufacturer Promatic, which don't just make sporting layouts like the one you can see at the FitAsk World Championships. I went to a local clay club to have a look at a bunker they've put in. Italy is a trap shooting nation. The country has more than 600 trap clubs and well presented clays in beautiful countryside make shooting here a great pleasure. One of the top clubs in the country is Umbria Verde, today hosting an Olympic trench competition. The ground has a dozen bunkers and its newest one is by British clay pigeon trap manufacturer Promatic. This is one of the most important shooting range uh, we have uh, in the heart uh, of Italy. Uh, there was uh, some very old trap uh, on the bunker number one. They needed to find uh, the uh, right uh, and uh, innovate solution uh, for a new bunker and they decided to switch uh, with uh, this new machine. They heard uh, before that there was this uh, new Promatic machine for the Olympic trap. Uh, they already heard that Promatic company was perfect for sporting and everything so they said this would be a good choice. He is uh, more than happy because uh, from the time uh, they, they put the trap, uh, the new trap uh, here there's been no problem. So the 2016 model is very operator friendly, it's very quick to change the angles um, and to actually look at the spring tension is simple and also the way that we hold the clay in the three point hold that is absolutely perfect from my point of view now and the electronics that with, the, with the machine and the way the solenoid works gives us as near to an absolute instantaneous bird as we possibly can. When I first took the company over in 97, I live very close to North Wales Shooting School. North Wales Shooting School to me was one of the homes of Olympic Trench in the UK. Uh, they used to hold the Rolex International Grand Prix. Um, it was the most prestigious shoot in the UK. Subsequent to that, when I took over Promatic, we installed our first new style Olympic trench machine and to this day that is still used at North Wales Shooting School. So we've expanded the model, we've improved the model, we've sold many many layouts in the UK, in China and, and across the USA. And many uh, teams uh, are shooting over our Olympic trench including some of the finest shots in the UK. So I've always liked to go to the heart of trap shooting. And the heart of trap shooting is Italy. We can go nowhere better than Italy with 600 grounds that are shooting Olympic trench or trap disciplines over here. So to have the opportunity to put our 2016 new model here, thanks to um, Marco and his team, is, is very, very good for Promatic. For more about shooting at Umbria Verde, go to umbriaverdeshootingrange.com and for Promatic, visit promatic.co.uk. That is it for this episode of Clay Sports. I've got a nice bottle of Chianti to get back to. We will see you in a month.